drones, also referred to as unmanned aerial vehicles. Their destruction and threat per unit cost is extraordinary. For years, advanced countries' militaries have operated drones in battle, but it was not until now that everyday people forced to fight or given used what was just a hobby to fight from the air. Drones do not require a pilot on board. They are smaller, fly lower, and are stealthier than most of any other aerial vehicle. People have realized that a simple store-bought drone can be used to fight a foreign enemy. Drones are cheap, easy to get, and simple to operate. All these factors combined have created a new era of warfare. Without a human life on the line, these remote pilots are changing the way we fight. Of course, these craft have their limitations, but I saw a photo online of a drone that looked exactly like something I would build and decided to see if I could build my own drone and bomb a simulated target. As an average RC plane guy and avid pyrotechnic, let's see what I come up with. Must have a live camera, second HD recording camera, be able to drop an explosive payload, plenty of power and endurance, and reusable slash inexpensive. The first step in my drone project was building the payload. Depending on the kind of payload, the airplane would have to be designed around it. Now after playing with some old rocket motors, I could create something like this. To create this pyro, all I had to do was unwrap a rocket motor and get the fuel out. Once I had the fuel, I simply taped a fuse onto it and then taped the motor up with electrical tape to try and optimize the explosive. After becoming a firefighter with a brick, I decided that this would be a good payload. It isn't a huge explosive, so it isn't loud, but it definitely would make a lot of smoke in the air or on the ground, which would help me identify if I've hit a target or not. So I came home and started working on the mount to hold the payload. The way the charge works is basically the fuse is tied in a knot around a loop, and there's a little piece of tape there just for extra security. And when this fuse is burning, it melts the tape and it will untie itself because, well, it burns itself out of the knot. This means the explosive can only drop if the fuse is lit, meaning that I can light the fuse from the airplane and have it free fall until the fuse runs out and the explosive explodes. It took me quite a long time to figure out the actual look I wanted this drone to have. I wanted to incorporate a lot of new designs that you see in a lot of other drones, like the V-tail. Having this plane be a more conventional polar with a normal tail would have sped up construction quite significantly. But an unconventional airplane looks pretty neat and I wanted something cool, so I designed this. My only fear is that the wing is too far back, and when I go to add the bomb dropping system, there will be too much weight in the nose and the aircraft will fly too nose heavy. Well, it's ready for its maiden flight without any bomb dropping equipment or any other fancy gear, so let's go fly it. My drone was ready to fly, and I just got this brand new 4K run cam camera to hopefully make my videos a little bit better. You can probably tell from the run cam angle that this airplane had to have a lot of up elevator just to fly straight. After completing a successful first flight and making sure the wings wouldn't snap off, I decided to move the camera towards the tail and face it forwards to hopefully try and fix the center of mass problem. Rough landing. Now I had moved the center of mass about halfway down the wing, which means this aircraft is flying very tail heavy, but still, it felt just a little nose heavy, but it definitely flew much better. And I think it flew so much better that I was so confident I flew it upside down.
Now on the day of the test, the plane had changed quite a lot. The battery was moved, landing gear was added, and there was a lot of extra weight and the plane flew, well, not so great. So I went for a little test flight without any explosives just to make sure the planes do still flew and I decided to remove the new landing gear because it was just too much weight and I went straight into the first bombing run. Unfortunately, on the first flight with the bomb, the fuse did not light and although I tried to repackage it and try it again, this first explosive just did not want to go. Not sure why still, I have looked at the footage, but it just didn't want to go. Now the second fuse did light, but I completely missed the target. And same with the second pyro. These bombs were made well, but using the fuse to light the bomb and drop it was a bad idea, as the fuse is quite unpredictable. That one went, just not where I wanted. past I have made planes that can drop fake bombs with no explosives, and I could do it quite accurately too. But combining real explosives and the bomb dropping gear is quite difficult. In my testing, it all worked fine but once in the air, things clearly didn't go to plan. Using a mechanism what's like what's found on my older bomb droppers combined with a ground impact detonator would have worked wonders better, but a ground impact detonator is something I don't want to play with. Although the bombing performance was poor, you can see the potential of how someone with a little more experience and pyrotechnics could rig this up to be much better than what I did. With more work and time, this idea could have been taken to the next level. I've spent the last week making this project and video, and I've tried to make this my best video ever. So if you enjoyed, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel to help me grow. And thanks everybody, and I hope you enjoyed.